Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number five in our incredible new tutorial series where you're unleashing the power of your Pico W. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. And the cool thing is the kit includes the Pico W. And so most of you probably already have your gear, but if you don't have your gear yet, look down in the description, there is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and get yourself a kit. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameful self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is how to read analog voltages using your Pico W. Now, why would you want to read analog voltages? Well, first of all, a lot of the sensors in the kit are based on resistance and voltages and so to read those sensors, you need to be able to read analog voltages. Or maybe you're making a project and you want to have a user input from something like this little knob, which is a potentiometer that you'll find in your kit. And then as you turn the knob, you will get different voltages coming out of this. And therefore, by reading the voltage, you can read the knob position and you can add user input to your project, something like maybe you would want to control the volume with the knob, or maybe you would want to control the brightness of an LED or the color of an LED based on these little potentiometers. And so one of the really important things to be able to do in any project almost is read analog voltages. And that's what I'm going to teach you how to do today. Now, if you took my Raspberry Pi class, you know that to read analog voltages from the Raspberry Pi, it's quite difficult. You have to use an external analog to digital converter. You have to install libraries. It's quite complicated. The really good news here is the good news is, is that on the Pico W, it's very easy to read analog voltages. You don't have to install any libraries and you don't have to go in and use any external componentry. And so it really makes it very nice. So let's jump in and let me show you how to do this. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to start by kind of understanding how these little potentiometers work, this little, uh, this little knob. You'll find it, uh, you'll find it in your uh, Sun Founder kit. And let's jump in and let's talk about how that little potentiometer works. And let's see here. We will see if we can get up. Ah, very good. <clears throat> and then I need to get out of your way. <clears throat> and here we are. Okay. And so what you'll notice, first of all, is, is that the potentiometer has three legs. There's the top leg. And then there is the bottom leg. Let me move this over here a little bit more conveniently. <clears throat> uh, okay, let's try that again. There's the top leg. There's the bottom leg. Now between the top leg and the bottom leg, there is a resistor. But the potentiometer has that magic third leg out here and that is the middle leg. Now what that middle leg is, it acts as a variable resistor and you could kind of think of it as a wiper here. Okay, so from the outside pins, that always has the same resistance. That always has the same resistance and we'll call that RT for R total. And then there is a resistance R1 between the center leg and the top leg, and then there is an R2 between the center leg and the bottom leg. Now, as you turn the knob, R1 and R2 change, but what is always true, R1 plus R2 is equal to RT, the total resistance. Okay, now I hope that makes sense. Now what you could think is as you turn the knob, you're moving this little wiper blade up and down. 
Okay, let's say that you moved it all the way to the left and the wiper blade is up here. Well, R1 goes away, it goes to zero. So R2 is gonna be what? The R total. Or what if you moved the wiper blade all the way down, then R2 is gonna go away and you're left with R1 and R1 is gonna be equal to R, uh, RT. And in between those, R1 and R2 change such that their total is always equal to the total resistance. Okay, so now let me, uh, let's see if I can draw a few of these things a little better here. Okay, so now let's imagine that we set the knob all the way to the left. Okay, now what is the voltage that we're gonna connect to this top pin? It's 3.3 volts. Why? That's the voltage output of the Pico W. That's the voltage that the Pico W operates at. So that is going to be set to 3.3 volts. And then this bottom leg is going to be grounded. And so that's going to be zero volts or it's going to be ground. Okay. And then what are we going to do? We are going to read from the center pin and we're going to read that on one of the GPIO pins on the Pico W. Okay, so that center leg, the top leg is gonna be connected to 3.3 volts, the bottom leg is gonna be connected to ground, and the magical center leg is gonna be connected to one of the GPIO pins, all right? Now let's imagine <clears throat> we move the wiper all the way to the left, and therefore it's up here. What are we going to read at the GPIO pin? We're going to read 3.3 volts because it's going to be all the way up here. What if we moved it all the way to the right and it comes down here? Then we would be reading zero volts. Well, what happens in between these two positions? Well, it's going to vary between zero and 3.3 volts. And so as we turn the knob, we should be reading voltage is all the way to the left zero all the way to the right 3.3 volts. Does that make sense? Okay, and then we can take that voltage value and we can do decide to do things like change the color of an LED, change the volume of an audio output, change the brightness of an LED. We could do all types of changes based on that, but in order to do that, we have to first be able to what? We have to be able to read it. And so let's see if we can jump in here. Let's see if we can jump in. <clears throat> and let me do a little Windows management here. And what we're gonna see if we can do is we're gonna see if we can figure out how to hook that thing up. Well, the first thing we're gonna have to do is figure out which GPIO pin to use to read that center leg off of the potentiometer. <clears throat> Now, remember when we were applying voltages, we could use any of these light green. We could use any of these light green uh, <clears throat> GPIO pins, but if we're gonna do an analog read, we have to use one of the special GPIO pins, and that's one of the GPIO pins that's designed to do analog read. And in order to do that, you need to look over here, and this is like analog to digital converter zero, analog to digital converter one, and analog to digital converter two. So there's three different pins that we can use to read analog signals. And so we could use uh, pin physical pin 31, physical pin 32, or physical pin 34, and those correspond to GPIO pins 26, 27, and 28. Well, for the sake of setting up our circuit, we're gonna go ahead and we are going to use GPIO pin 28, which is physical pin 34. And so with that, let me kind of show you the schematic that we are gonna be hooking up here. And you should kind of recognize it as I've sort of already described it. So we said that the top leg or the outside leg of the, uh, the outside leg of the uh, potentiometer, the, 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 this would be like the bottom leg needs to be connected to ground. Now you could come over here and try to pull a line pull a wire from here all the way over and have it land at one of the ground pins. But 
in general, when we're making a project, I always like to create a ground rail. And so let's come back and see if we can find a convenient ground pin. And you can see that to the right of the USB connector, if we come down three pins, that is a ground. <clears throat> so we come back over here and we can see we go over one pin, two pin, three pins, that is a ground. And I'm gonna bring that down to this second to the bottom row. And then that whole row is gonna become a what? It's gonna become a ground rail. Now, when I want ground for this outside leg of the potentiometer, I just connect it down to the ground rail. Now, similarly, we're gonna need 3.3 volts, right? We're gonna need that 3.3 volts. And so we're gonna to need to set up, again, we could go straight across, right? We could go straight across and pick up that 3.3 volts, but I would rather create a 3.3 volt rail. And so if we come back to our pinout, you can see that I have a 3.3 volt out on physical pin 36, which is two pins below the ground, okay? And so if we come back over here, we will see that this is my ground, setting up a ground rail. This pin is 3.3 volts. We'll bring it down to the bottom row, and now that bottom row is a 3.3 volt rail. And so I've got the bottom leg of the potentiometer hook to ground, I have the top leg of the potentiometer or the right leg connected to the 3.3 volts. Now, what do I need to do? I need to read from, I need to read from the uh, center pin of the potentiometer. And that is gonna come over to pin 28, GPIO pin 28. And we'll look at the pin out again. And you can see that GPIO pin 20 out, 28, it's like you skip one, you skip 35, and then the next one will be GPIO pin 28. And so we come over here, we skip one, and then uh, or we come over here to the 3.3 uh, volts, we skip one, and then we are sitting here at GPIO pin 28. It comes over and it connects to the center pin of the potentiometer. Now, physically in the real world, we can come over here and you can see that I have that hooked up. Now, as we're getting a little bit better and getting into these lessons, I am not going to make you watch me hook this up, but you can see that this I have hooked up, which is exactly what we had right here. So this is the schematic and this is the circuit in the real world. And so that is ready to go. So you need to get your circuit hooked up. And then what we need to do is we need to learn how to write the code where we can read the voltage off of that center pin. Now, what do we expect? We expect that if we're all the way to the left, right? Remember that picture we did when we're all the way to the left, we should be reading what? Zero volts, because we're gonna be pointing at the ground, okay? If we move all the way to the right, what do we expect? We expect to be reading the 3.3 volts. What if we are halfway between the two? Well, you would be expecting something like about 1.6, about, you know, something like 1.65, half of 3.3 volts. And so now we've got the circuit hooked up. Now what it comes down to is just writing the code. And so let me come over here and see if I can get a convenient code view for you. And uh, so what we'll need to do is go ahead and call up Thonny. Okay, so I've got Thani here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to write the code where we can read from that center pin on pin 28. Well, the first thing we're gonna need to do, we're gonna need to import our GPIO library. And this time we need to import machine. Now, last time we would, in some of the earlier lessons, we would just be importing pin from machine, but this time we need to import the entire machine library. So we're going to import machine. Now we're also going to probably need to do a delay in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and say from time import sleep. 
Okay. Now in the past, we would directly be specifying our GPIO pins, but really it's a better habit if we start assigning variables to those, pin, those pins. And so I'm just gonna call the variable pot pin. Okay, in the pot pin, it's connected to which GPIO pin? It's connected to GPIO pin 28. Okay, and you can see that uh, GPIO pin 28 is right there. Okay, does that make sense? So we are moving right along. Now I have to create an object. I have to create that potentiometer object that I'm gonna read from. And so that I'm gonna call my pot for my potentiometer and that's equal to machine. That's the library that we just imported. And then dot what, the method is ADC for analog to digital converter because we're gonna to wanna to do an analog to digital conversion. And then what do we connect to? We connect to pin 28, right? Wrong, wrong. We're not going to use constants. We're gonna use what? The variable because we already set pot pin to 28. So when we put pot pin here, it's gonna know that it's 28. What's the advantage of doing it this way? The advantage is now if I ever wanna use one of the other uh, pot pins, you know, one of the other analog inputs, I can just change it here and I don't have to be going through and searching through the code to figure out all the places that I need to change that number. So that is a little bit of a pro tip there. Now, do we want to make one reading or do we want to constantly read? We want to constantly read so we read inside of a loop and we learned how to do that earlier. We will create a while loop while true. When is true true? True is always true. So when I do this, don't forget your colon, and now I'm tabbed over here. Anything that is tabbed over, any code that is tabbed over is gonna be looped through. So what do I want to do? I want to read, I want to read from the center pin of the potentiometer, which is connected up to the pot pin over here. How do, how do I do that? Well, I'm gonna say the pot val, that's what I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read pot val. You can call your variable whatever you want, but it's the value coming off the potentiometer. I'm calling it pot val. And then that is going to be my pot. And my pot is the object that I created up here. And so it's gonna know that my pot is on 28 because my pot was connected to pot pin and pot pin was 28. Okay, so I need to do a uh, pot val is my pot. Okay, and then I'm gonna read. Okay, I'm going to read, and the way I do a read, I say dot read underscore U16. Now we'll talk a little bit later about what exactly U16 means, but for right now, we will just do the read. <coughs> and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to print pot valve. Okay, and now I'm gonna put a little bit of a delay in, so let's sleep by 0.5. Okay, wow, could it really be, could it really be that easy? Okay, so now let's go ahead and set this all the way to the right. Okay, we're gonna set this all the way to the right. And so when I run this now, what voltage, what voltage would I expect to see? The voltage that I would expect to see is I would expect to see 3.3 volts. So I need everyone to hold your breath. And it is running. The good news, it is running. But the bad news is, the bad news is, is that it is reading 65,535, which is what? It is not 3.3 volts. And so where did that crazy 65,535 come from? Well, let's just see even if we're getting anything reasonable, like if I come straight up, the good news is that number is changing. And if I set this straight up, I'm now reading 33,000. So kind of the good news is it went from 65 to 33, so it's halfway, and that's sort of what we expected that value to be half of what that was. And then if I keep coming all the way over, I don't quite go to zero, I go to 432, but 432 is really close to zero if you're on a scale of 65,000. Okay, so what is going on here? What is going on? Well, what it is reading is, it's not reading on a scale 
of voltage, it's not reading on a scale to volt uh, of voltage. It is reading on a scale of bits. And so it is going from zero bits or almost zero bits up to 65,500 bits, something like that. <clears throat> so where does that 65,000 come from? Well, let's go back and look at this read. What this is saying is we are reading a 16-bit number. Okay, we are reading a 16-bit number. Now, if I just had one bit, how many numbers could I read? I'd read two, zero and one. If I had two bits, it would be four, and then it would be eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. And so each additional bit gets larger and larger and larger. And so let's come back over here and let's just see it's a 16 bit number. Well, if I take the number two and I raise it to 16 for 16 bits, <clears throat> what is two to the 16th? Well, it's 64. 5,536, which is almost precisely what we were reading here. So let's come back over here and let's switch it all the way over. And what are we reading for full scale? 65,535. Well, now we were kind of expecting 65,536, right? But remember we start at zero and so we end up one less than that. And so it kind of it kind of makes sense where we ended up here. And so this is then what becomes the challenge. We're going from almost zero to full scale of 65,000, uh, what was it, 65,535. Now, what we need to do is we're happy because it's working right and it's scaling right, but we have to turn that, that binary number into a number that would be kind of useful to us, okay? Something that we think in like voltage. Well, how would we do that? Okay, well, first of all, let's notice that it's 65,535 when it's all the way to the right, that would be what? 3.3 volts. And then if we go all the way to the left, it is reading, let's say, uh, let's say about 430. Okay, let's say about 430. And so we're going to come back over here and we're going to do some math. Okay, now what I need you to do is I do need you to actually learn this math. And if you have taken my classes before, you have certainly gone through the math. But what I need you to do is I need you to actually really learn this, uh, really learn how to do this. Let me get my sketch pad back up here. Okay, let's see if we can get that, uh, get that back connected. Always a question if my sketch pad is going to pop up there. Okay, I think we've got it now. I really do want to get this where it works a little bit better at some point. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's clear this. And how do we convert, say, 430 between a scale between 430 to 65,000? How do we convert that? How do we do that conversion where we take 432 and make it zero and the 65,536 and make it 3.3 volts. Well, we got to kind of think about this. Well, what are we reading? We are reading 430 like that. And that 430, when I read 430 off the potentiometer, that really co corresponds to a voltage of what? That is a voltage of zero, right? Now, when we read then 65,536, that corresponds to a voltage of what? Of 3.3 .3 volts. And so this would be one point, 
that we have. And then this would be a second point. We'll call this point one, and we will call this point two. Okay, now <clears throat> let's kind of think of it on a graph. So what are we reading? We're reading pot val. Okay, and pot val goes from like 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, and then 60,000. Okay, those are the values that we're reading. That is our x-axis. Those are what we are reading. We are reading like from here to here. Okay, now what do we want to turn that into? We want to turn that into 1 volt, 2 volt, 3 volt, and then that would be about 3.3. .3. Well, what is our first point? Our first point is this. And so what would that be at 430? On the x-axis, we would want the y-axis to be zero, so we would have that point. Let me change my colors here. So we would have this point here, okay? Then what is the second point? It's 65, 536, so this would be 60. This would be 65, 536. We would want to be up here at about 3.3 .3 volts. So you can see I'm just kind of estimating it there. So if I read 430, I want an output of zero. If I read 65,536, I want an output of 3.3 .3 volts. And then I want it to scale linearly between those two. So what would I have? I would have a line. All right. Now, if I want to, and this, this, is, uh, this is voltage over here. Okay, uh, voltage. That is voltage, okay. Now, if I want to take any pot valve, if I want to take any pot valve and turn it into any voltage, I need the what? I need the equation of the line. Now, what I see you guys doing, because you've taken my classes before, somewhere along the way, 90% of you have punted on the math. And the way most of you guys would do this would be, oh, well, I'm going to take 65, 536 divided by 430 times 3. Point. You try to just do a ratio. And ratios don't work if you don't have a y-intercept of zero. So you kind of develop this little knack of trying to do ratios and you apply that when it's not really appropriate and therefore you go through your life guesstimating. I want to show you how to do it correctly, okay? And how do we do that? By determining the equation of a line. If we want to determine the equation of a line, we need what? two points. And the first thing that we do is we calculate the slope. And so let's come in here and do that. How do we calculate the slope of this line? Well, the slope is equal to y2 minus y1, y2 minus y1 over <clears throat> x2 minus x1. Okay. And what would that be? Well, Y2 is 3.3 .3 volts, so it's going to be 3.3 .3 minus Y1, which is zero. Use your parentheses, and then divided by, use your parentheses, X1, which is 65, 536 minus X1, which is 400 and 30, like that. So now what is the slope? M is going to be simply 3.3 .3 divided by 65, and then 5 minus 4 is 1, 6, 5, 1, and then 3 minus 3 is 0, and then 6 minus 0 is 6. So the slope is going to be 3.3 .3 divided by 65,000 106. So this is my slope. Now, once you have the slope, how do you get the equation of the line? Y minus Y1 is equal to M onto X minus X1. Don't forget to use your parentheses there. So this is going to be Y minus 
what is y1? y1 is 0. And that is going to be slope, which is 3.3 divided by 65106, like that. And then times what? <clears throat> x minus, and what is x1? x1 is 430, like that. Okay, y minus 0 is 3.3 .3 divided by 65106 x minus 430. So now y is going to be equal to, because the 0 goes away, 3.3 .3 divided by 65106 times x minus 430 times 3.3. Three. Let me make the times a little better there. Over 65106. All right. And so now let me go ahead and change x and y for the variables we're using, which are pot, valve, and voltage. Therefore, if I want the actual voltage, the actual voltage is going to be equal to 3.3 .3 divided by 60. 5106 times x minus 400 and 430 I'm sorry 430 times so this was 430 times 3.3 .3 divided by 65106 like that. Okay, so now what do we have? Voltage is equal to 3.3 .3 over 65106 times what is our x value? It is pot val minus 430 times 3.3 .3 divided by 65106. Okay, so now what I can do for any pot valve, for any pot valve that I read, I can convert it very nicely to voltage. Okay, guys, we're going to be using this math all the way through this class. And your old way of just trying to do ratios is not going to work. I have shown you how to do the math. When you have two points, you can calculate the slope of the line. And now without any funny business or guessing, we can actually do this correctly. So I need you to write this equation down. And your numbers might be slightly different. Maybe your number was not 430 or 65. Uh, 556 it might have been slightly different so you need to use your numbers but now what we need to do is we need to go in and we need to put that equation into our program over here so we are going to come back over here okay and then uh, let's see <clears throat> What have we measured? We have measured pot valve. Okay, we have measured pot valve. But do I want pot valve? No, I want what? I want voltage. Okay, and so what I will do is I will come in now, and what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the voltage. And the voltage is going to be equal to the slope, which is what? 3.3 .3 divided by. 65106 like that okay and then times what times the pot val all right and then we subtracted what 430 times 3.3 .3 divided by 65106 430 and you couldn't see that could you Let me switch over here. Okay, now you can see it. So what 
what we have is voltage is 3.3 divided by 65106 times pot valve minus 430 times 3.3 divided by 65, uh, 65106. And we went through the math. Now, instead of print, printing pot valve, I want to print what? Voltage like that. Okay, so now what we have done is we've taken this arbitrary crazy business, which was between 430 and 6556. And if we've done all this right, we should now be getting what? An actual voltage number that should go from zero to 3.3 volts. Okay, what kind of craziness is this? But man, what I really hope is, I really hope that you can see that math is your friend. Okay, I hope what you can see is math is your friend. And there is no way you could have figured this out just trying to wing it or act like a crazy man. What I want you to see is that math that they taught you in high school, it's actually useful. Math is your friend. Math is your friend. Now, after all of that, let's see how many mistakes I made in here. I calculated voltage, pot valve, I should have that. So I'm gonna need you to hold your breath and, ah, Oh, well, I'm actually getting numbers. Okay, I'm getting numbers and the numbers are kind of looking good. So let's come back over here to this view. Okay, and where are we? We're all the way to the left. When we're all the way to the left, we would expect to be reading what? Zero, but we're reading one one thousandth of a volt, which is like pretty darn close to zero. Now, what do we expect this to go to when I go all the way over? I go to a voltage of 3.299999, giddy up. Okay, we have taken an arbitrary scale and we've mapped, mapped it onto something that is really meaningful, which is voltage. So we're going from zero to 3.3 volts within the, within the uncertainty of the measurement here. Now, what would we expect if we point it straight up? We would expect it to be somewhere up around one 0.65 volts and there it is 1.65 volts when it is pointing straight up as we come to the left we get lower voltages and when we come to the right we get higher voltages okay guys wow now <clears throat> a lot of you probably hate math and a lot of you have probably just developed ways of winging it. But what I really need you to do is I need you to come in here and understand what I did. Because you see, it took, what, two minutes to work through this problem? And all the problems are going to be the same. It's just you're going to have two points, what you're reading and what you want that to be. And then a second point, what you're reading and what you want that to be. Then you have two points and then the math is always going to be the same to create the, the, uh, to create the equation of the line. And don't punt on this. You need to go in and you need to become comfortable with what I've shown here. And then as you are comfortable with what I've shown here in future lessons, you're going to be able to do the homeworks. Okay. In future lessons, you are going to be able to do the homeworks. And so what I am going to need you to do is I am going to give you a homework assignment for next week and I need you to work it on your own. The circuit is going to be the same as the circuit that I just showed you, but when you're all the way to the left, I want you to read the number 100. And when you're all the way to the right, I want you to read the number zero. So you're going to go all the way to the left. It should be 100. All the way to the right, it should be zero. And when it's straight up, the number should be reading something like 50. Okay, same circuit, same potentiometer. It's just a different set of out output values. Why am I giving you this assignment? So you can see that you can go in and you can really do the math. Okay, and then as you do really do the math and you get the homework assignment to work, <clears throat> then you'll begin to see that math is your friend. Now, when you do the homework assignment, I want you to post it to YouTube, even if it is as simple as just filming your screen and then filming your circuit with your, uh, with your phone, upload it to YouTube and your description, leave a link back to this video. And then down below, leave a link that goes over to your homework solution. Then I want you to look at other people's homework solution and I want you to comment on their homework solution. 
It's why we want to start developing a little bit of a sense of community. I want you guys to start to get to know each other. And then as we start getting to harder and more advanced homework assignments, you guys can kind of talk about it on the videos that you're posting. Does that make sense? I really hope it does. Man, guys, I hope that you will learn the math. If there's anything that I hope that you get out of this class is that you'll learn to do the math. You'll learn that math is your friend. And then the projects will start getting really, really exciting because you're not just out there guessing and checking. You're out there actually doing the real math. Okay, guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking these lessons as I am making them. And then uh, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, when you subscribe, make sure that you ring that bell so that you get notification of future lessons. And most importantly, share this video uh, series with other people. Show, uh, share this playlist with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later. <laughs>